Hello friend. Some time ago we installed this automatic door for these three terrors. It opens at dawn and shuts at dusk. It does it whether or not the geese are inside. Using an old wiper motor and an Arduino, in this video we'll make a different kind of automatic door for the chicken coop. Here's what we've got, a nice grubby old windshield wiper motor. Let's just see if that works. I'm using an old ATX power supply for the 12 volt supply and we'll just see what we can do. I believe the ground doesn't really matter which way round we do this one will be reversed but the ground wire is that white one. The brown one here also makes it go but just at a different speed. We need to attach some kind of spool or something to this so that we can lift up and down. I'm not gonna be making a linear actuator because I think that's a bit more complicated than the spool, although it would be cool. I think we'll be soldering directly to these. This might end up being mounted like with the chicken shed there. We've got this piece here I thought we might be able to use as a mounting bracket. Found this old cut off shaft thing. No idea what it's from, it's just in the scraps pile, but I think we can make that work. The output shaft on the wiper motors integrated gearbox is an M8 thread. Considering the speed and load requirements of this would be spindle, one could almost certainly get away with making this out of wood. All we'd really need to do is add a robust 8mm joining point to the wooden part and I guess you could do that with some kind of pronged insert nut type thing. got the wiper motor, we've got the bracket that fits to the wiper motor, and we've got the reel that we've just prepared. Now one of the things with this is, because this is just going to be winding under gravity, not like a linear actuator which would push the door up and down, the plus with that is we don't need any safety mechanism to make sure there's a chicken not about to be squashed in half by a linear actuator which has enough power to do that. But the downside is that I feel just because it's under gravity, the door might be snouted up or pushed up by a fox potentially. So we either need to make it quite heavy and that might even in fact be beneficial because I think this will wind better and have less chance of going like snagging and coming off like that. Or we need to make some manner of sort of shoot bolt locking mechanism. One way I can think of that we might do that is have the cord going all the way down to the bottom of the door and a spring release so that when weight comes off the cord, some springs push out lock bolts. We'll see. Probably not because I imagine this will end up like that if weight comes off the string. Okay, here we go. I've spent a semi-ridiculous amount of time franken-splicing together the Arduino code and putting this together in my pristine lab environment here. It's using a Nano Every, though I think exactly the same thing would work on basically any Arduino. It's using a light detector. That's this little thing here and we'll need to find some way of mounting that outside. The light detector code is quite cool. It's borrowed from other people's projects. It will check for 100 seconds or so before it decides, yes, it definitely is dark or light. So uh, someone's shadow passing by or something like that should not just suddenly switch open and close the door. This is the DC to DC converter I'm using. 
it's nothing special. And we've got voltage coming in, voltage going out, and you adjust the voltage with this baby here. It's relatively efficient, very cheap and quite small. The Arduino has an onboard converter, so we would be able to plug 12 volts straight into that and it will power itself quite nicely. But as soon as you ask it to power other things like the 5 volt relay board, it would quickly overheat. This big lead acid should allow some interest. Yep. No, I don't even know why I presented that one thing up to another. Not proper, I admit, but this is a very low current. Ah, so it on, it actually looks like we're going to get really quite tight voltage regulation, so I'm pretty happy with that. They're all quite cheap if you can wait for slow delivery, but these ones are so cheap they don't even have relays labelled. So I've just been laying some of this out here. I'm realizing that I could have, you could save yourself some money and time on the converter here. If you are going for a solar system like I am, this is just a cheap charge controller for a 12 volt battery. It comes with a USB charging port, about well, two, two USB charging ports that are five volts out. So we could have taken the five volts straight from that. I haven't tested it. I'm assuming that's a reasonably tightly controlled five volts. Either way, now I've got this. The way this solar charge controller works is you plug the battery in here. You can just about make out a battery symbol. You plug the load in here. In this case, it's going to be the 12 volts coming to our converter board and the motor relays and you plug the solar panel last in here and it takes care of not overcharging the battery and that sort of thing. It's not a particularly slatty one but then it's going in a chicken shed so. The uh, 5 volt step down board is on the bottom there. That looks like we're not a million miles off with the hole placement. In case you're unfamiliar with Arduino, all you need to know is that it's like a little computer. It can take inputs like the light sensor and can be told to output signals based on them. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Let's try putting this around here somewhere. There. The cool thing about Arduino is that it's cheap and super easy to learn. I want to be quite snappy with the soldering so that the resistor doesn't take any heat damage. So the last thing to solder on the manual switch. It's become rather awkward, I'll admit. Again, Spending some time getting proper holding apparatus would be sensible. I've just uploaded the new code to this configuration with the new soldered up board and things, and it is working perfectly. I'm really pleased with that. I uh, just need to finalize some of this, tie it all down, put the motor on. I haven't tried the motor yet. Okay, when we fire this up, this should start rotating immediately. Let's see what happens until the upper limit switch is pressed. So, and it should wind and send it. Okay, well, that didn't work very well, did it? Um, hmm. Well, I don't know why that didn't work. We've got, oh, it's because the power's not even on. So I need to switch which ones come on. I'm fairly sure now if I get the down action going. I'll start winding. And that's the kind of thing I was afraid of. <laughs> Let's stop there then. 
So this needs weight on that much is clear. Oh dear, we've like jammed it up nicely now. Added a weight in the form of a small plumbing fitting. I've changed it to the slower speed setting this time. Ready to try this once more. Okay, the door has reached the top. Let me switch it. It's got plenty of power. It definitely doesn't need the faster setting. So now we just need a box to cover this up so the chickens don't pack up the wires and such. Grab the limit switches, put it all in the coop, and hoo ha! Found this scrap of checker plate, which almost unbelievably seems to be just the right shape and size. It's heavy enough that I think it'll keep the tension on the winder and wire rope nice so it won't tangle up. If it comes down slowly on top of a chicken, I don't think it's quite heavy enough to crush one. It's obviously a ridiculous overbuild. Uh, proper portcullis thing this will be. Checkering might present some sort of snaglets for the sliding through guides action, but I think we'll probably get around that. We'll see how it goes. Rust remover type stuff. I want it all on the inside just because I think it'll be last longer and be weather protected. What's this? <laughs> like some kind of bizarre giant inside a hobbit house or something. Taking up slack. Uh -huh. Okay, well, something seems to be amiss. It's getting dark out, and this is not even close to being finished. It's uh, in fact, gone backwards. There's been a few bodgeries. I think we blew the power circuit for the Arduino, uh, probably with back and forth thing from switching motor too too much. Hmm. We are back on the bench. This little bad boy let out the smoke. I don't know if you can see that. Did a good old fashioned melting. So. Oh, where do we go from here? Basically, you need to redo everything. The relay system, that's not going to work. We'll get rid of that. We're going to go for the pulse width modulation. Everything needs redoing. Uh, quite strongly down. If we desolder all this, we'll be back. 
Okay, here's the second version. I've just been putting the standoffs on for the motor driver board. It's gonna be going straight from the USB on the charge controller. Mounting the Arduino, we've just got two little pins in either corner, that was just to sort of line it up, and some big dollops of hot melt glue underneath that you can just about see. going to be mounted this way up so that heat sink there is completely the wrong way around to catch the air going up but because it's going to be going for like 10 seconds twice a day I don't think we really need to worry about this overheating. Right then, this all seems to be working quite well. Let's fit the mini house shelter for the press button. The lower limit switch, which activates when the top of the door rolls past it. And we've got the solar panel here hooked up. It's a little secondhand 20 watt one. And it just runs down here into the mess of wiring, which I'm sort of temporarily tidying up. If we find they're pecking away at the wires in any way, we'll have to cover that whole sort of area up with ply, a bit like this. So now we'll see how that works. <laughs> Hello again, it's been a few seasons now and we're still checking the chickens when they go to bed. Why? Well, because we just like doing that, but also every now and again one gets shut out. Not because we haven't calibrated it right, in fact there's two parameters in the code where you can set the light and dark setting of when this closes or opens. The problem is one of our old, old chickens tends to stand in the doorway and just block it and then occasionally a less <laughs> assertive chicken ends up being trapped outside. Even though the door shuts very slowly at half speed then it opens. Apart from that it's been working great and it's wonderful not having to get up super early in the morning to let them out and not having to worry if we go away for a few days. It would be nice if it counted them in and then shut, but that's a level of complexity we're definitely not going to. The other thing we've done is to add a timer into the code so that when the door is shutting, if it doesn't hit the limit switch at the bottom, we'll now have something's blocking it. It'll just wind down after a certain time's expired. It won't go back up again. If you're interested in doing a similar thing, I'll leave all our code and circuit diagrams and stuff on the Ko-Fi page. Next stop is Earhart Pod Row. No, here, yeah, cluster. Come on then, chicken, chicken. Come on, old cow. Here you come. There she is.